Traditional sweet recipes from Malta Volume 2 soon available at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com Traditional sweet recipes, creating a small size of Malta that feels like home. Today we are at the Maltese Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant with the owner Mark Mitzi who is also one of our gold sponsors for Season 5 so thank you Mark for You're supporting welcome. Maltese Down Under. You're very welcome, thank you. Now before we go into how this um, Pasitsi Bar came about, we're going to talk about your um, uh, background in hospitality. So you've been in the hospitality industry for quite a while. Yes, over 35 years. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell us more about that, how did you get started in that? Uh, well I was always, I've always been involved in food at the age of 13, work, working in a restaurant restaurant, working at the back, cooking, you know, washing dishes and so forth. But um, my passion of food has always been there from the start. Then of course I worked for Nestle Food Service in, in hospitality there um, for seven years and also owning my own reception venue as well which is Garden Host Receptions. And I've been involved with a Mexican restaurant with Taco Bills for nine years. And then I said one day to Susan, my partner, I said maybe we should um, look at doing something for the Maltese and let's just do a, a little small Maltese a little pastizzi bar and this uh -huh. is where the name pastizzi bar came from and what we, we did was just as a thought I said let's just give it a try we'll trial it at the the, uh, the other restaurant and we did and from there it just basically went on from strength to strength and uh, we went next door and we said to them listen are you guys interested in, in moving out and they said we do so uh, we just said okay we let's took the opportunity we took the opportunity and uh, here we are today so, as you said, you've worked in a, rest, in a Mexican um, uh, environment for the last nine years, yes. yes. <laughs> and finally, you came back to your culture, to Maltese. That's, right. That's correct, yes. <laughs> what about the, um, uh, the recipes that are used here? Yeah, all recipes are traditional recipes from uh -huh. grandparents and parents and, and mum and so forth. Um, but a lot of the things that we do are traditional foods. Um, you know, being a chef as well, we don't want to tweak with a lot of the, the Maltese traditional meals. Of course, we're never going to do it better than what mum or grandma does, but we try to get emulate the, the flavours and so forth, try to get them as close as we can to, you know, everyone's taste is different yeah. and everyone's upbringing is different, but we try to make sure that we get them tried as traditional as possible. Yeah. So what does when it, one expect when they come to the Maltese Pasitsi Bar and well, Restaurant? Well, the environment is, is important. I'm being a musician for over 30 years, the important thing is to make sure that you know, you walk in, you, you have a good aura about the place, a uh, friendly approach, customer service is important, you know. Yeah. Uh, Maltese haven't had many restaurants and so it's very daunting for them to walk in and expect something to be as what walking into a house full of a family and, and friends and so forth and, and hosting a, a dinner and so forth. And that's mm -hmm. what we try to emulate with all our clients and, and, uh, and pe uh, people. Yeah. Uh, what about the menu? Run us through the menu. Well, the menu changes every week. And the reason why we do this is because we don't want a, a whole extensive menu because then obviously to do that, you don't know what you're going to cater for throughout the week. So what we do, we do three or four main dishes a week and mm -hmm. we change them every week. And by doing that, it, if someone wants to come in every week, at least they know it's going to be a different menu Something every time. Something different. Yep. Even knowing that the Maltese um, cuisine is not quite extensive, but the good thing about it is it's full of flavours. What have been the hits so far? I would think Fennec. <laughs> well, Fennec, believe it or not, is actually starting tomorrow, which is right. on Tuesday. Yes, uh, and that's going to run for the whole week. And the response over that, especially over Facebook, has been incredible. Mm -hmm. But the, the bragioli have been very popular. Last week we did the um, arun with the long macaroni. Um, the rosted form was very popular. Ravi the raviolis uh, on every day of the week. Um, but the hops bizate, which we make a very traditional one, was my, my dad's traditional um, meal that he liked. And unfortunately, that was the last meal that I had with my dad when we went out together, when he lived in Bormla. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, the, the most important thing for me is to make sure that we, we try to get it right, okay? Yeah. If we don't get it right the, and someone tells us it's not right, we, we take criticism. Uh, on board and we, we yeah. try to emulate what we can do for them. You mentioned Bormla. Tell us more about your family history or well, your family, yeah, the family Bormla history. Bormla was where my dad loved to go to get his um, hospice zate. So this is right. why I went with my dad to Bormla. My dad actually was grown up grown up in uh, Lisla. Right. But my, mom, but my mom was in Kalkara, so they were very close together. Yep. So if anybody knows where the Grajola is in Lisla, that's where mum and dad used to meet when you know, oh, they were dating. Oh, how romantic is that? Yes, it is. <laughs> but, um, between uh, Kalkara, Birgul, Bormla and Lisla, we obviously we're all, you know, all the, a lot of the recipes have come from as well. Mm -hmm. This is where the uh, majority of my family have grown up and I go and visit my mum every year. So they migrated here in? Oh, they migrated, yeah, back and forth uh, every year. Yep, uh, every three years they used to come down because they have got children and siblings here. Uh-huh. Yes. But you were born yep. here? I was born here. 
Yes. Even though you were born here, I talk about Malta. Mel, I'm not talking about Malta. Oh, you understand? Mel, Mel, I didn't know that you were from Malta. Why? Why did you have to go to Malta to learn Malta? I went to Malta when I was eight years old. You speak English? All right. I was eight years old. I was in Malta and I was three years old. I was in the school of Malta. I was in the school of Malta. I was in the school of Malta. مارو مارو جمالت بشه آدم هم من وقت ام ام مسیری را من متان شم فطور علینا حالورا رئال جینا جینا من آیا بود 11 سال مدت کلیش؟ اوزا میت مالت تاین. پروفایت او. What I noticed as well, we're talking about how Mark speaks Maltese as well, even though he wasn't born in Malta, but he spent three years in Malta. Yes. I noticed I was here a few days ago sampling your beautiful food. Thank you. And I noticed that you know the way that you you come around and you make everyone feel welcome and you put in that little bit of Maltese as well. It really feels like it home. It does, it does. Especially when someone walks in the door and it's, uh, you, as soon as you say to them, bonjour, they feel at home <laughs> from the start. They feel welcome. And yep. it, as our slogan says, you know, our family is your family. It's an important part. As soon as they walk in that door and as soon as they walk out that door, that's the most important thing for us. مرحبا لورا في البروغرام مولتيس داون اندا فين سيرين كومبلو نتكلمو مع مارك ميتسي سيت تاع المولتيس باستيتسي بارن ريستورانت وات من السبونسرز تاع دان البروغرام. You mentioned how it's a bit daunting walking into a Maltese restaurant because there haven't been many in the past. Correct. Why do you think that's so? Well, majority of Maltese, of course, they've grown up with the cooking of mum and grandma. Mm -hmm. And because there hasn't been any Maltese restaurants around, it's for them to go out to a Maltese restaurant, it's, it's an unknown. You know what I mean? I mean, there's been a few restaurants that have tried and, and haven't succeeded for what are various reasons. But I think that the most important thing is that they're used to the cooking for mum and grandma. Yeah. And this is the hardest thing that we had to endure from the start. This is why we've tried to do it from the start right, and we've do, we're doing it right well. This is what we're, we're getting the feedback and, and everybody's telling us. But the important thing is, is that it's the generation that's coming through today is what we're looking at as well mm -hmm. because the generation will bring the parents to the restaurant where they wouldn't be able to do that in the past yeah. and of course the generation coming through today are able to take their Greek, Italian, Chinese or whatever it might be to their cultural that they've been brought up with mm -hmm. as far as the food's concerned. So that's where we're looking at because eventually we'll, we'll open on the Fridays and the Saturday nights which we only open uh, for lunches at the time being. But that's what we're emulating. That's what we're trying to get um, get through, basically, to get the, the culture, uh, the generation to basically continue on and be proud of what they're taking their yeah. friends to eat. So. And I must admit, it is so nice to be able to bring friends and family, yes, exactly. or, or mostly friends from other cultures, yes. um, to enjoy Maltese food 100%. and a Maltese atmosphere yep. outside of Malta. 100%. And yep. that's what Sue and I are trying to do. We're trying to make sure that, you know, we're very kid friendly because we all have children. Yeah. And we're just trying, we make sure that when those kids walk in, we're making them uh, feel welcome as well. Because, you know, yourself, you go to restaurants today, kids, you know, it's not kid friendly. Uh, we make sure the kids get a little gift before they leave. We make sure That's that the awesome. kids are happy. And if, yeah. you know, if they want something that they're not eating, we'll try to make sure that they're, that they're happy. If they're happy, the parents are happy as well. So. Was it daunting starting a new business when you're sort of more mature in life? Yes, <laughs> we're noticing that it takes up a lot of your time. I mean, people yeah. think, you know, just running a restaurant's easy, but I'm running two restaurants, not just the one. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue and I, you know, it, it's ta it has taken a lot of our time. You know, we're here from 6 o'clock in the morning, and we don't leave till 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the evening. So, you know, it's a 12-hour shift, yeah. and then we start next door. So it's, uh, that's the hardest part. But listen, it, we're enjoying it because the people are enjoying it, and yeah. we can't ask for more than that. What about your kids? What, what do they think? Well, my 10-year-old my daughter, she's actually here helping us. She loves putting on the gloves, wow. and she loves making the hops bizarre. So She's right in oh, it. Oh yes, she's, <laughs> and a lot of people that will see the program will, will know that they've been here and they've seen my daughter and they say she is an amazing, amazing person. But um, yes, the, the kids love it. The kids love it. Sue is um, uh, Mark's partner, and no background in hospitality, yeah. So, no, no, no. <laughs> so it must have been quite daunting for you. Yes, it was. It was very daunting. Tell it. What, was it what you expected? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. The no. overwhelmness that people feel when they come in here mm -hmm. um, took us by surprise. Yeah. We had a lot of people um, very emotional. Extremely emotional. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people walk in, hear the music, taste the food, 
uh, and us talking to the Maltese just get very emotional and cry, mm. don't they? Oh, yeah. Even yeah. men. It makes us very proud to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we get a buzz when we see people walking in, and especially when Mark's at the coffee machine, <laughs> first thing he does is, bonjour, and they're already smiling. So, yeah, and that's a great start. That's something that Maltese are well known for, yes. yeah, their yeah, hospitality definitely. and their friendliness. So, yeah. so it's something Correct. that definitely comes across as soon Correct. as you enter here. Mm. And you've also got your mum involved as well. Yes. <laughs> She's our, uh, our back lady. Yep. And yep. what does she do? Obviously, first of all, recipes and yes. the experience of Maltese cooking. She makes cooking. the best beginner. Best beginner <laughs> in town. Best beginner in town. Yes, best beginner in town. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't say better than everyone else's, but I'm just saying <laughs> she makes very good beginner. <laughs> Remember, we're not better than anyone else's mum or grandma, yes? And no. of all this food that you're cooking here, what's your favourite? Um, well, Hops would say to be my favourite, <laughs> but uh, the bragioli, the bragioli is, is probably my favourite, yes. Mm. What's the secret when you're preparing Maltese food? Passion. Passion. Without a mm. doubt is passion. It, what you put into it is what you get out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and w the main pleasing thing for us, Susan and I, is when we see the plates that are empty, mm. we know we've done our job. Some of them don't need that. to be washed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's no joke. Well, ours didn't when we came <laughs> in. <laughs> Thank, uh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Tell us more about the location, because you're situated in Essendon. That's correct. So in the west of Melbourne, where you find a big concentration of Maltese. Yes. Was that part of the, you know, factors, I've, something I've that factored in? I've been in Essendon for a long time, for probably the last 20 years. And mm -hmm. I know that there's a, quite a big Maltese, um, you know, community, community in, in around, the area, yeah. yes. But the good thing about it is that it doesn't matter where you are. If this was on the other side of the city, people from the west will travel to mm -hmm. the, to the yes. east and vice versa. We had a lot of people, we had a lot of people from uh, Adelaide. We've got a bus load coming in from Sydney and we had Brisbane and, uh, and Perth last week. So, and that's, that's what it's all about. Now, the restaurant has yes. only been open for a few weeks, yes, really, correct, since yes. June... June the 26th, 26th. Would be, yes, was but the But you've been so busy and been. it was quite overwhelming, it I has think. Been. It has been very, very overwhelming, yes. So make sure you book before you come. 100%, <laughs> especially on the weekends, you must book. I mean, we, we did a Father's Day um, promotion uh, and 240 seats sold within 24 hours. Oh, my goodness. So it's, that's uh, fantastic. It is, it's great. And obviously, the, we can see that the power of, uh, of Facebook and the yeah. power of programs as yourself mm -hmm. is what you know gets the word around, and, and that for that we're forever grateful. So, well, this program thanks you so very much for supporting us. Thank you. And it's a pleasure for us to support you as well. And the pleasure's all mine. And for those watching, you've got to come to the Maltese Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant. Um, enjoy this incredible atmosphere that they've got here. It's just a little taste of Malta in Melbourne. Oh, it's Salif Tahnil Kom Laptit, Nisadin Kom Sabish, is Zurun Maltese Fasitsi Bar and Restaurant, who I do love the right to one for Maltese down and up. Yena Matfadali Shane Schneidil Kom Hlef, Linati Kom Appuntamenti Horal, Palum Juma Flistes Heen. Oh, Yaktish to Otam Lukunta Tmana, Batulna email for Maltese TV at gmail.com, Yawinka La Permet Stalpaj Natana for Facebook. Yena Marlin Nishtil Kom is Saha. Maltese Down Under thanks the Malta Tourism Authority, Mayfield's Business Advisors, MPD Steak Kitchen, Maltese Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant, First National Balkan Associates, Maltese Original Pasitsi Company, Smartline and our bronze sponsors.